ההוכחה של קידשנו ומצוותיו ניסינו להכניסו בבריתו של אברהם אבינו, הוא עושה זדת דה פאדר. He is the one that make the breed, the mitzvah. So now, says the Gemara, what if a person did it before Netz Minyan? Netz at the 705. He made it 630, the Brit Mila. It's kasher or no? Or he missed out the mitzvah? Says the Gemara, it's kasher but not 100%. It's a secondary. You know, there is a, there, there, there is a Toyota 80, 88 model he drives. There is Lexus 2022. But both drive. How does this one drive? That's how does this one drive? They both drive, but you rather already, if you get something, you get something that is more comfortable. How much more so when a person does mitzvot, he doesn't want to do a mitzvah, tako, if tara sipena, you know, bediavad. Mitzvah, 100%. What, we Jewish people, we invest into materialistic life, 100%. We don't get things second things, second uh, best. We get the best. So how much more so for mitzvot? Person have to come to Hashem, and he show Hashem, I want to do something for you, much more better than I do for my materialistic world. Something that's going to last 70 years. Look, Baruch Hashem, Jamaica is dead. How much the investment goes on for? Somebody is going to last 70, 80, 90 years. How long are you going to keep that house? <laughs> Such an investment. Lights from here, waterfall from there, parking light paved over there. <laughs> Such a demonachona. What's the reason? <laughs> I want to feel comfortable. Yoni Chalfesh, for something going to last 30, 40, 50 years. Look how much investment you're going for. For something going to last eternity. How much time did you invest in this? Where is the proportion? Something temporary investing so much, something that it is long lasting, investing such a short time. If any. So, so now, says the Gemara, Lulav, if a person did Lulav before Nitz, he fulfilled the mitzvah or no? 6.30 he wants to shake Lulav. He fulfilled the mitzvah or no? No, no. Huh? The Avad. Secondary, not the best. The Toyota 88 model. <laughs> you know, it drives, but not the best. Was one time a person was in a rush. Purim day, he had to catch a flight, and he got confused with the dating. He scheduled his flight on Purim. Right now, was in a tomorrow, tomorrow night, there's a guy that made, booked, booked his tickets, five or six tickets to Israel. When? Tomorrow night. Wow. Tomorrow night, what it is? Yom Tov Shemini Atzeret. He said, Rabbi, it's $10,000. Wow. Maybe you find me something, maybe I'll do by the Avad, something. $10,000! For Israeli to afford $10,000, know what it is? It's an arm and a leg. I mean, I told him, Habibi, I cannot find you anything. You want to go to a bigger rabbi? I, I don't know any other way for you. But this situation was on Purim. The difference between you know, Purim, he says, Rabbi, I need you to read me the Megillah. Before Nets, you're reading by Nets, the first reading. Please do me a favor, I pay any money. I don't want to miss Megillah, I got confused. I scheduled on Purim day. I got a for you. Morning, you come to my house more earlier than uh, Nets, you read for me. Me and my family. It's kasher or no? No problem. Huh? No problem. It's not the best, but as long as it's after Alot HaShachar, Yatzai Dechova. Tfila, same thing. The best is? After Alot Hashem, after Netz, after Et Netz, Et Netz and on. Rav Yosef Yosef writes, Rav Yalkut Yosef in Siman Peitet. How do you remember Siman Peitet? Prayer time, easy way to remember. Peitet, prayer time. So uh, Rav Yitzchak Yosef says, if a person has an option to pray before Netz, right now it's going to be Netz late, 7, 5, 7, 10, 7, 15, 7, 20, until November 6, going to change the hour, it's going to be late Netz. Some people cannot do that. They want to pray earlier. So if they if forced, they cannot do wait until that late, they can pray earlier. But what if a person sometimes, he, he can pray later. He's not in a rush to work. He starts work 11, 12 o'clock. He opens his office. But in his town, the only available minyan, 6.30, Amida. Nets, 7.20, 7.15, 7.10 a.m. He has to say Kaddish. But he doesn't have to pray at that time. Is he allowed to go pray with them at 6.30? Or should he go say Kaddish without praying at 6.30? Oh, he's allowed. Wait, what? Most of huh? Most of Can you go pray with them or no? That's the only available minyan. Says Rav Yitzchak Yosef, it's such a bad to pray before Nets to the point that if you can pray Yahid at Nets or later, it's better than to pray earlier than Nets with minyan. 
again. You hear this? I'm sorry. Again. Again. Shocking things. Shocking things you have to repeat twice. Shnai Mika Hatargum. Kaddish, you can say any time of the day or of the night. No, I know, but by himself. Yeah, no, 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 no. He comes to the synagogue 6.30, they start 6.20, whenever they start. He'll say Kaddish. And then he's going to leave. Kaddish, you can say day, night, mid, ben ashmashot, min ha, with kagachoch. That doesn't have a time. Kippur, Hoshana, Yom Tov, all the time, Kaddish is Kaddish. He's praising Hashem. Question is, what happens if a person, Amida, Adonai Sefatai Tiftach, Ufi Agiti Ilatecha, this prayer, Supposed to be prayed, Shmona Yisrael, supposed to be prayed after Nets or later. That's the proper time. What if a person has the only available Minyan before Nets? Choy Mujelet. Huh? Minyan Po'alim. Choy Mujelet. Should you go to Minyan Po'alim and pray? Minyan Po'alim is a, a group of people that pray before Nets, before sunrise. Can he pray with them? Can he wear tefillin, say Shema, pray Shmona Yisrael with them? Or, if he's going to wait for Nitz, he's going to stay by himself in the shul. Everybody's going to leave already. Choy Mujelet. Yahid by Nitz, or Minyan before Nitz. Choy Mujelet. Nitz by No, yeah, is it an everyday thing? Like, he has to be at work? Or uh, no, he doesn't have to be at work. You can't find any other Minyan on the Any other Minyan. He, pray, he lives in Colorado. The only available Minyan is at New York. Choy Choy Mujelet. He says, he says Kaddish, but he says Kaddish Kazit. He says Kaddish Kazit. He says He just asks about the Shmona Isri. Then you have to wait. Huh? Yeah. Says Rabbi Tzhak Yosef. I'm telling you the Siman, you can all look. Siman, pay it. Prayer time. Says Rabbi Tzhak Yosef, you pray Yahid by net, then with Minyan before net. So bad to pray before net, he says. So I said, listen to this now. You know, some synagogues, whenever they get together at Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, Eli Shavuot, when you stay up the whole night, some people should be Shil Pesach. What usually happens in the morning? People are so tired. They say, Rabbi, oh, let's go, let's start. Alot HaShachar, they start about 15 minutes before Alot HaShachar Korbanot. At Alot HaShachar, 6 in the morning, you start with Baruch Shamar. And they just go, they pray Shmona Yisrael, maybe at 620, at 6, uh, yeah, 620, 630, 640, it's another half an hour. They pray early, they're tired, they want to go sleep, they're going to go home. Comes out, look at what, what they did. Shema Yisrael, they did Bidiyavad, didn't do it Nitz. Prayer, they did Bidiyavad before Nitz. Lulav, what did they do? Bidiyavad before Nitz. Lulav supposed to be during the day. Halil, the Torah, the, 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 the Levush, Levush is a uh, Mordechai Yafe. You know the story with the Levush? You know, Mr. Izgelov, there was one person 400 years ago, he was the student of the Ramah, Rabbi Moshe Israelish, in Europe. He was a very beautiful man. He was named Rabbi Mordechai Yafe. Yafe in Hebrew, Yafe, beautiful. One day, he was a merchant. He used to go from door to door, he used to sell things, small things. He used to make a parnasa like this. One day, he's walking into a house, and a woman over there, Devona, tells him, come inside, I want to buy. Right. Goes inside. He goes inside, he tells, she tells him, listen, if you're not going to do with me right now, Avera, something forbidden, I'm going to call the police saying that you walked into my house and you tried to rape me. Now he's a big rabbi. Everybody knows. Imagine tomorrow, all over the news, the biggest rabbi of the Jewish people was raping a woman. Imagine what a shame is, what chilul Hashem is, is. Terrible thing. The rabbi, the rabbi said, no problem, no problem. Let me go inside the room, I'll change, I'm coming out. Jump out the window. He goes outside, he says from the window, there is a big number two pile from all the neighbors. Was that? The trash area. The, I said? The trash area, whatever. The no, 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 the number two area. Oh, like, oh okay. Where they went to the restaurant. Okay. Dump. Dump? Dump. Go dump? Bad. Okay. He says, Hashem, I'm jumping from the roof. If you save me, no more merchandise, no more merchants, no more dardisar. I'm dedicating myself, going to Eretz Israel. Don't do anything besides study Torah. I'm going to have Panasai, it's your problem. Wow. 
I'm dedicating myself if you save my life. He jumps out of the window into number two. He was saved. He had eight garments on him at that time. All of them smell terrible. Imagine number two of all the neighbors for who knows how many months it's there. Terrible smell. He comes out and he says, Hashem, for every bad smell of my clothes, Buhari said, Levos, of every bad smell of my Levush, I will write a Sefer after this bad smell that this Sefer is going to bring good smell to the world. And that's the famous Levush that we always say. The Levush said, the Levush. Mazda Levush is the name of the book that Ramode Hayafer wrote. After the miracle that Hashem did to him, he dedicated his life, he went to Eretz Israel, and he was studying the Torah, and he became a big haham, bigger haham than he was. He writes that in Halel, we have to be more careful to say it after Nets than before Nets. You know why? He says, if you pay attention, the Torah says about Lulav, Bayom Arishon, Ulkachtem Lachem, Bayom Arishon. The Torah says the word Yom. Yom in Hebrew means day. He comes to Halel. Can you say Halel during the night time? That's a chalei praspal. You rush to the morning to work. Mincha arvit, you finished arvit. You say, Rabbi, yo, I forgot to say halel today. Uze halel, uze shkiyas ta'ala. Uze bet sata kohabim. Can you say halel now? Yes. Prapal, chodjel. Prapal, you. Zabil. What should you do? Can you say halel now or no? Yes. Says the Gemara, Masechet Megillah Davchav. It says by, by halel, you have to do it only during the daytime. You cannot do it during the nighttime. How do we know? Because the Pasuk says, Mimizrah Shemesh Ad Mevo Meulal Shem Adonai. Remember this Pasuk? Yi Shem Adonai Mevorach Meata Veadola Mimizrah Shemesh Ad Mevo Meulal Shem Adonai. Ram al Kol Goim Adonai Ala Shamaim Kevodo Adonai Adonenu. We all remember this Pasuk, right? We love this Pasukim. It means there is no Tahanun. Anna, there is no Yishem, yalla. <laughs> so, what do we say over there? Mimizrah Shemesh Ad Mevo'o. From the time that the Shemesh, the sun, comes up, until the sun, Mevo'o, comes back down, Mehulal Shem Adonai. So, what does it mean from sunrise till sunset? So, says the Levush, you see that the Pasuk emphasized, not just do, say during the day, the Pasuk said from sunrise. So don't even have permission to count before sunrise as a day, like, like uh, from Alot HaShachar time. So therefore, look at how much loss the person gets whenever he's praying before Nets. He's Lulav, Bedi'avad. He's Halel, very Bedi'avad. He's Shaharit, forget about it. According to some opinions, he, <laughs> he didn't do the right thing. Skiyat Shema, Deoray Takiyat Shema. Bediavad. All this, what's the reason people rush? Because they want to do the longer kafot. Why is it called Osha'ana Rabba, you know? Tonight, what Nazavai is Osha'ana Rabba. Why is it called Osha'ana Rabba? Huh? What's the reason behind it? Osha'ana Rabba is the day that we say a lot of Ho, Osha'ana, Ho, Osha'ana. How do you say in Hebrew a lot? Arbe. So Osha'ana Rabba. In Aramaic, the word Rabba is Arbe. Yesh Amir Rabba. Rabbah is the big one, the, the a lot one. So Hoshana Rabbah is the day that we say a lot of times, Hoshana, Hoshana. Now, whenever we go around the Teva, on the seventh day, how many days? We, how many times we go around? Seven times. Seven times. And the prayers over there are very, very long. If you calculate time-wise, it takes about 25, 30 minutes, if, especially if there's selling goes on for this. Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, David, just, oh, 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 it's uh, another time. Five, ten minutes goes for the selling, auction off, the mitzvot for, to support the synagogue. If not, more. Uh, if not more, certain truths. So look at this. People in a rush, they started much earlier than it. They got all the four mitzvot by the Abad. So by the Abad, Prashol. Toyota 88. 1988. And then what they do? Then they do a kafot. Uh, sorry, auction. Rabbi, this auction is a measure. Auction. Auction is allowed before that? Before, <laughs> auction is allowed anytime. <laughs> That's the only thing it's allowed anytime. <laughs> he goes around the, te- we go around the Tava for about half an hour. So what did I suggest? I said, Rabotai, do you know, I looked into the books, 
plenty of books, and I have everything. Whatever I'm saying, it's all typed in my in my uh, tshuva. I can send to sources whoever needs it. Do you know that this akafot originally was not before Musaf? This akafot originally, who brought this akafot to do all this? Rav Hai Gaon. Where was it? Where did they do it in Rav Hai Gaon time? Babel. When? 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 After Musaf. Ah. Not before Musaf. So we see that it's not mandatory to be before Musaf, that section. It could have been before Shaharit also. The same way they changed it from after Musaf, for whatever reason, they moved it before Musaf. In Yerushalayim, they changed it 300 years ago. They changed it before Musaf. Maybe they saw that people were leaving. So how much more so, not how much more so, but so too, will be allowed to put it before Shaharit. So what did I suggest? I should just suggest that I'm going to do this here also in the shul I am right now at. At 6 o'clock in the morning, we're going to do a kafot. Da'akafot. With all the prayers, but without lulav, without arava. The Arizal says, you're not allowed to do touch the arava before you finish the akafot with the lulav. He says the lulav brings chesed down to the world. Lulav brings kindness of Hashem down to the world. The arava brings judgments to the world. The one that we beat up, this brings judgment to the world. He says, you cannot, that's the Lashon, he says, do not touch it. He says, do not basically do the mitzvah of it. Until you didn't finish the mitzvah with the lulav. You finish the mitzvah with the lulav, then you're allowed to bring the arava to the picture. So therefore, what are we going to do? We're going to go around the teva seven times. Read all the uh, long prayers that we do. Anna Hashem Oshiana, Hashem Yisrael, Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, the whole entire thing. With the Sefer Torah, whatever it is. Do the akafot. You finish the akafot, it's already going to be 6.30 a.m. Give or take. 6.30 a.m. start akedah. Zuh. Huh? Zuh. Yeah? 6 30 a.m. You start Akeda. You finished the now now you start you prayed nets and you came out from the shul same time. So even the one that they are in a rush, they don't want to wait until nets, nets is late. They want to do it earlier, Pajosta. Six o'clock you start Akafot, six thirty you finish them. You're gonna pray nets, you finish the nets, you did Shema Israel the best time, you did the prayer the best time. The afterwards, you're going to go to do the lulav, the best time. It's yom, yom, 100%. Then you say the halel, the best time. Now, you have to do a kafot. Take the lulav. Go quickly, seven times. Without any section prayers, anything. Seven times, seven kafot. Yala nigmar. Sefar Torah, read it. Musaf, go home. You see? You, have, you touch up, just a person switched around. He made it without any problems. But this rabotai is second best. If you want to do the best of the best, you have to keep everything in order. Means start shaharit at 6.30 without doing a kafot before. I'm just giving that advice to places that are not going to wait until nits. So I say, listen, you want to start praying? Start with this prayer. Like this, at least the prayer, the proper prayer is going to be at nits minyan. Like this, you're going to cover so all opinions. Yeah. What about this group that he mentioned that before nits? What, minyan po'alim? Mm -hmm. No. That's a permission that Chachamim gave us for a situation of impressing times. Like when a person has to go work. He has to be at work or in the road at 7.30. If just 7.20 is Amida, it means that at 8 o'clock you're going to come out of the shul. So he doesn't have so much time. So therefore, to these situations, Halakha allows him to pray Earlier than that, after Alot Hashachar, Paijot, which is after dawn time. But that's not the best, the ideal thing to do. The, the best of the best thing to do so, is that a person. Is that just in case if you have an early flight, you're going to be on a plane traveling. On right, those situations, flight, flight, you have to go. Exactly. How early you can do it? From dawn time. You look in the calendar, you also download an application, free application called Cal J, C A L J. It's free. Put the settings of Ravad Yosef, go to the settings, Ravad Yosef, Ravad Yosef. You're always going to know when is the dawn time, when is Shema Israel latest time, when is Tefillin earliest time. All the details of the halakha will be very comfortable for you. You put your location, you can put Miami location, you can put find out when is Yushuo, when is Bar Mitzvah, when is uh, all Kaddish to say, all these things are in that application. It's a free application, you can download and enjoy it. Kalje, yes, yes, this one. Okay, till now. So now, 12.35, the, the, the schedule for that I do myself, 12.35, Be'ezrat Hashem will finish Sefer Dvarim. At 12.40, at 
We say the entire Shema Israel from the beginning of Shema till the end of Shema Israel on the bedtime Shema. What that show полностью finish the entire thing, huh? Kriyat Shema, Kriyat Shema bedtime without Birkat Amapil, without Amapil Chayv Leishena Alinayu Tuma Alaf Avdeh. No, this one don't say. Why? Because you don't go to sleep. If you don't go to sleep, how are you going to say this? 12:40 came. Go to the restroom. Number one, don't have to be number two. Number one, came out. Asher etzar et adam bechokma, kofe kol basar mafli laasod. Elohai neshama shenat atabit yorah. Right away, birkot hashachar. According to Arizal, when is the best time to say birkot hashachar? Midnight. Hatzot. Who else brings it lehalacha? Rav David Yosef. In Siman Mem Zayin, he also says the best time to say birkot hashachar is at midnight. It's not in the morning when you wake up. That's the best. But not everybody are up at midnight. Twelve forty majority of people during the year are sleeping. So that's why right now we're not sleeping. Take advantage of it. Twelve forty, everybody birkot hashachar. Till gomel chasadim tovim le'amo Israel. You got the gomel chasadim tovim le'amo Israel. Stop there. Birkot hashatora. You're gonna do in the morning six o'clock in the morning. Paniatna. Now you finish the prayer tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, Rabotai, is the last day of Sukkot that we say bracha. Throughout the whole day. It's the last day of Sukkot that we say bracha. Monday morning. Sunday, no, no. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Sivon Utram. Chiris Paruch Sof, right? It's going to be Sunday morning. Throughout the whole day of Sunday, it's the last day we'll sit in Sukkah and say bracha lisheba Sukkah. Sunday night you don't say? Sunday night you sit in Sukkah, but you don't say bracha. Gemara says, Yatu ve yatvinan, baruche lo mevarchinan. Sitting in Sukkah we do, blessing on the Sukkah, we don't, we don't, we don't do. Monday morning, same thing? No, Ma Monday morning, yeah, same thing. Monday night, go back home. you're not allowed anymore in Sukkah, sure. Not Bal allowed. Not allowed anymore in Sukkah. If you want to sit in Sukkah on Monday night, shashlik, whatever it is you're doing outside, bring inside the Sukkah pot. Because when you're bringing a pot inside the sukkah, you made the sukkah not kosher. A pot? Pot. Dig. Dig, kazan, dava, all these things. That they are, people cook with them. You put it inside the sukkah or you take down the schach. I think it's easier for you to bring inside a pot than take out the schach. But, huh? No, they want to sit. You know, weather, whatever it is, they're comfortable. They don't want to go inside, dirty the house, whatever it is. Parquet novi pasta jalka. <laughs> they feel bad for that. They want to sit outside. Allowed. Okay? That's as far as the schedule of Abotai for the, these days. I want to tell you one thing. Where is this girl? Is girl off? Bit. Bit. Where is your brother? I saw him. I'm so sure. Listen, Abotai, I'll, I'll finish off with this. Huh? Yeah, that's Gemara. Yeah, Gemara says Pasul. Gemara says, Amarava, Mani Michla, Bar Mitlalta. Mani Michla, whatever you're cooking with, Bar Mitlalta. It's to be outside the Sukkah. And the Rambam and the Rif both say that if you're bringing it inside the Sukkah, it disqualifies the Sukkah. It makes the Sukkah Pasul. Ravadi Yosef also brings it. If you want to bring Chazon Avadi Sukkot, I'll show it to you. That's throughout the whole week. That's why always better outside the Sukkah, you put one table. Over there is going to be serving table from the Deg into the Langri. In Durni Sukkot, only Langri. You don't bring inside the Sukkah the pad, you bring inside the Sukkah. Only langri, only the serving plate, not the pot. Wait, if let's say I did that, the whole, the, 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 first the time, the time that the sukkah, the, sorry, the, <laughs> the time that this, the pot is inside, it disqualifies the sukkah. For, for the seven days? No, no. I said the at the time that this pot is there, it disqualifies the sukkah. Okay, is this clear? Very good. But I want to finish off. I prepared you a very important shiur, but Baruch Hashem, there's a lot of questions that I'm sure the community needs, so I allowed you to go on a different point. But I wanted to share with you a very important point that Be'ezat Hashem is going to be very beneficial to all of us, all Am Israel. If I will ask you, Rabotai, what is number one blessing, Be'emet, written in our books, not something that the seller of the auction made up. Sgura for Parnasa, Be'emet. If somebody had to ask you, Rabbi, I want to get real sgula for panasa. Can you please give me one? But I want it to be real. And prove it to me. Pitumaktor, it's kafahaim brought it. It's a haron. 
We're talking about earlier, earlier source, sources. Huh? Obviously, Shlom Bait is the bracha you get. You get when you get when you got bracha, the Shlom Bait will maintain it. But how do you make the bracha to come down to you? So listen, Rabotai, Gemara in Masechet Brachot in Dafchet Amud Aleph telling us. On the bottom, last lines over there. Gemara says over there that Shlomo Amelech made a terrible mistake only whenever he distanced himself from his rabbi. What was a terrible mistake Shlomo Amelech did? You know, Rabotai, how powerful Shlomo Amelech was? You, King Salomon, you know how powerful he was? Shlomo Amelech, it says about him, that he was in control of the Elyonim and the Tachtonim. You know what it means? No. He was able to control Malachim. And he was able to control the demons down, the, down in the world. There's the under, under the ground there's demons, according to Torah. And Shlomo HaMelech was in control of the Elyonim and the Tachtonim. Rabotai, you understand what it is? Imagine right now Putin. Putin is a very powerful man. Very powerful man. Pol politic wise, very strong. Can Putin come to somebody today in Jamaica State and say, listen, you have to come, you have to sell your, your house. He can threaten you, because he can kill, yeah. but can he force you to do that? Means to say by the government, by saying, listen, I'm Putin, come out of the house. <laughs> can you do that? You cannot. But I know Shlomo Melech. He was in control of the Elyonim, control, and the Tachtonim, and all the demons in the world. All the angels, all the people in the world, and all the demons down the world was under the control of Shlomo Amelech. Says the Gemara, Shlomo Amelech was a very successful man. Shlomo Amelech testifies, I had all the money in the world. I had all the pleasures in the world. What made Shlomo Amelech made a terrible mistake? Whenever he married the daughter of Paro. When did Shlomo Amelech fail into such a terrible mistake? King Solomon, where does he fall into such a terrible mistake? Says the Gemara, when he distanced himself from his rabbi. Rabotai, the biggest blessing that a person can receive financially, Be'emet written in our books, is when a person gives respect to the Torah and to the students of the Torah, Torah scholars. Gemara Masechet Makot says that people that respect the Torah and does not respect the people that study the Torah, they are shameful. Because who gives you Olam Abba, the Sefer Torah or the people that teach you the Sefer Torah? Avi John, do you know one halakha from Sefer Torah? One halakha, how to wear tefillin the right way, how to say Bishakol Yam Bidvaro the right way. From Sefer Torah, you know? Huh? Who? Talmud, I give you a Talmud. Do you know what to do, bottom line? You need to have a teacher that teaches you what the Torah meant, what the Talmud meant, what Rashi meant, what Shulchan Aruch meant, nachon? So says the Gemara, if in front of the Sefer Torah, when right now Sefer Torah would walk in, right now they bring over here Sefer Torah, what will happen to all the people right now? Get up, get up. how, like this? Way. Fully. Sefar Torah. Says the Gemara, who we supposed to respect more? The Sefar Torah? Or the people that teaches us the Sefar Torah? Equivalent. Gemara telling us, the people that teaches us more important in Hashem's eyes than the Sefar Torah itself. There is a Pasuk in, Shlom, in Shmuel Aleph. Shmuel, Navi. Shmuel Aleph, Perek Bet, Pasuk Lamed. Ki mechabedai achabed. Hashem says, if you want to be respected in life, and respect by people's eyes, always person that has money, person that has money, everybody will. Everybody will respect him. Says Hashem, mechabedai achabed. Whoever gives me respect, I will make sure that he will be respected. Says Chachamim Rabotai, what's the strongest way that you will be having the ability to be respected whenever you respect HaKadosh Baruch Hu. How do you respect HaKadosh Baruch Hu? By respecting the Torah of Hashem. And who, more, how much more so we have to make sure to respect the teachers that teaches us the Torah of Hashem. Rabotai, do you know, I'll give you a, a, a proof. Do you know, many people ran out of their countries whenever we all came to America. Bukharians, Syrians, Moroccans, Persians, a lot of people detached themselves from their house, home house, towns, places, and migrate to America. Who is the ones that you always say, oh, they, they have money? Siri. Ah. <laughs> we always hear, you hear this? This shul was built $30 million at, at uh, Rabbi Mansur. Eli Mansur, $30 million. 
Ah, he's the Syrians. We're trying to build the shield three for three, four million dollars. Oh, Pakami said the budget. Kagda, oh, ya alevi, ya vovi, ya gevi, ya evi, ya tsevi, shamavi, pakid, we're going to get the budget. Three, four million dollars. Thirty million dollars. What we all say? Ah, Rabbi is the Syrians. Rabotai, what's the secret of those Syrians that God blessed them with so much wealth? Ah, it's Hagjon. Do you know? that the Syrian people have tremendous respect to their Chachamim. Tremendous. Abotai, I'm telling you, when I was next to them, I was in Miami, my father has a shul over there. If you've ever been in Miami, in Sunny Isles, you have Aqualina building. It's the most expensive uh, at, uh, hotel on the beach. Aqualina. Across the street, was, was, there is a shul over there. Takoy. Big, big one. Rambam right now, the cold that ran on Rambam. Before, it was, my father used to be there. My father, the best Hazan ever, ever here. Beautiful. Midot, voice, makamim, very nice. When they used to come over there for, I remember, Pesach and Sukkot, like this. The shul, packed. No makom, en makom. Rabotai, whenever I, I was a, many, many years ago, much, much younger. I used to come give the Divrei Torah. Oh, Chacham, Chacham. They don't say Rabbi. Chacham. Chacham Awadia. Chacham. Everybody for them is Chacham. Chacham, come. Please, give us Divrei Torah. Chacham. What do you need? Chacham. Kol Azman Kacha. Such a high level respect. I asked them, weren't you like this? You know, some of them don't go with Kippah. I say, you don't go with Kippah and you give so much respect to the Rabbis. Well, how does it work like that? He says, you know, we grew up like that. That we have to give Kavod to the Chachamim more than to Sefar Torah. Mamash, as the Gemara said. We have to give kavod to Chachamim more than to Sefar Torah. He tells me, this Syrian guy, tells me, you know, in Halab, in Aram Tzova, which is in Syria, every household had to have Chacham Abayit. What is Chacham Abayit? Used to be a Chacham that this family supported. Called Chacham Abayit. That was the the Baracha, he was the, the, the good luck charm, the Kamea of the entire success of the business was this rabbi. It used to be the Chacham Abayit. Rabotai, do you know, Rabotai, do you know that Rothschild, how did he become a very wealthy man? Huh? Do you know the story of Rothschild? I'll finish over that story. Rabotai, Rothschild was at the beginning Shamash by one guy. One rabbi in the, in the, in the place was it was Shamash. Shamash nice to it. Huh? He was a botnik. It's to work. The rabbitan, the wife of the rabbi, used to save up for the wedding of her daughter. Back in the day, there is no such a thing. You come to a wedding, you bring a check, $300. <laughs> I can't make you happy. I have to bring $300. <laughs> there was no such a thing back in the day. You make a wedding, you have to pay for that. That's a big amount. So she saved from a young age money on the side to marry off the daughter tomorrow to be comfortable with the marriage. One day, Rabotai, Rothschild, was still Shamash, was a regular guy. He gets offer from a different place. He tells the rabbi, I want to go to a different place. Give me bracha, I want to be successful in life. Bracha, tzlacha, he went to a different place. Within a few days, comes Pesach. The wife, the rabbit said, che, che, cleans the entire house, checking Hametz here, checking Hametz there, Bahorim and Bazdakim. Suddenly, she goes to the safe to find if all the money is there, you know, to check Hametz, no Hametz. Suddenly, Rabotai, she finds out all the money is gone. Few days ago, Rothschild that was working in that house is gone. And the money is gone. What right away would you put the two together? Huh? What would you say? Who is the Ganav? Rabotai, this person goes, the rabbi goes, and he says to Rothschild, how dare you, eating in my house, doing so many things, and you stealing the money for the wedding of my daughter? We're not wealthy people. We need this money for, you don't. Imagine it's $100,000, Rabotai. Rothschild says, Rabbi, I'm so sorry, I had a t tough times. I didn't know what to do. I'm so sorry, I'm afraid. Give me a day or two, I'll bring you back the 100,000. 
Rabotai, it goes, it borrows money from people. As he is the thief. He gives the rabbi here, I'm so sorry, here's $100,000. He never took it. Rabbi goes back, he gives the rabbits and the money, everybody happy. Rabotai, after one year, somehow, the ganav, the real one, the thief, the real thief, was caught. And the rabbi found out that Rothschild never stole a dollar. We never argued either. But he didn't want to disrespect the rabbi. That the rabbi suspected a kosher man. The Mara says, Ahoshet Bikshirim, Loke Begufo. Rabbi, you're suspecting kosher people. He didn't want to say such a thing. Not to disrespect the rabbi. The rabbi said, I made you ashamed, I made your name down, I called you Ganav, I did, I was so upset at you. And I'm, whenever you're making somebody's name bad, it doesn't stay for his time only. What people say, you know who's his father? This, Ganav, this, that, that's his father. Four generations. The name, the name, you know who's his grandfather? The, the Ganav, remember the Ganav in Bukhara? That's his, that's the grandson. He said, because I made your name dirty, and probably you're going to suffer from that to your children and to your grandchildren. I give you a blessing that you will be wealthy. Your name is going to be so good that not only to you is going to be good. It's going to be good for you, for your kids, for your grandchildren, for your grandchildren. Until today, Rabotai is one of the wealthiest families in the world. I don't know, maybe the wealthiest. I, I didn't make a survey. One of the wealthiest people in the world is this Rabotai. In what honor did he get such a thing? Huh? In what honor did he get such a blessing? He did not want to. Disrespect the rabbi. Rabotai, many times, we have uh, our rabbi over here. Many times we feel like, you know, ah, I can say something. I can say, Habibi, this is the rabbi. You have to make sure to give the, your bracha and your financial that we bless. Like Adosh Baruch Hu Hashem, please give us parnasat ova. What is, will be determined, Rabotai, in what? Hashem says, I will give respect to the one who respects me. Mechabedai, achabed. I will give respect to the ones that are respecting me. So Rabotai, if we gave so much requests from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we put it on the list, Hashem, this year, What will be Rabotai determined if we're going to receive such a request that we ask from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? How much respect we're going to give? to the Talmidei Chachamim that we have around our neighborhood. Here at Son Rabotai that we should do the best respect and Kadosh Baruch is going to bless us with a wealthy, wealthy year in the upcoming year. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.